All right, today we got a 1999 Accord V6 here. Complaint is a check engine light. So let's go check it out and see what we got. All right, first thing we'll do is uh, verify the actual complaint. Make sure the check engine light is currently on. And yep, there it is right there. It's on. All right, let's hook up the scanner, see if we can't figure out what's setting it. We'll let this run for a little bit. It's going to scan all the modules. We'll see what it's got. All right, let's see what the check engine light is. And we got a 90-2, which is also known as a P1457, which is the EVAP control system leak in the EVAP canister area. Pretty common on these models. And so, uh, well, let's go and test it out, see if we can't figure out where it is. All right, let's go to the uh, drawing board here and talk about the system before we tackle it. The bottom line, the, the job of the EVAP system it's to minimize fuel vapors venting to the outside air. We don't want the fuel vapors that are in this gas tank going out to the outside air. That's the whole job of this thing. And we have, here we got the engine, we got the EVAP charcoal canister, and we got the gas tank. And then connecting all these, we have a purge valve that's up near the engine. We have the canister shut valve but that I drew it separate on this, but this is actually attached to the canister on this model. And then we have a two-way solenoid and bypass valve here. Um, we have the onboard vapor recovery uh, valve and then a fuel tank pressure sensor and of course you got the gas tank with the gas cap. So all those things work in concert together as part of your EVAP system. And how the system works is basically when you have fuel in your tank, part of it evaporates into vapor. And instead of that vapor going out into the outside air, the system is under pressure, or vacuum I should say, and the fumes go into the charcoal canister. They're sucked into the charcoal canister and they're held there, they're stored there, until the computer or the vehicle is ready to use them. And then when the computer tells the engine at certain times that we want the uh, we want to evacuate the evaps um, canister, it'll turn this purge valve on, which will open it, and it'll suck the fumes into the engine where they're burned. So instead of venting them into the atmosphere, we're sucking them into the engine where they can be burned off. And then so d during normal operation, the computer will open and close these valves at certain times and it'll look at the fuel tank pressure sensor for changes and that's basically how it knows when there's a leak when it shuts certain valves and it detects that there's the system is not holding pressure that's when you get a check engine light and that's what we have on this one and the two main check engine light codes that you're gonna see on an EVAP system are the P1456 and the P1457 which is what we have this time and you can see I drew a line right there and basically the 1457 is the canister side and the 1456 is the gas tank side. Now that doesn't mean you can't have the 1457 or 1456 set it code over here and vice versa. They can, but that's just a good um, overview of which way I go when I'm trying to determine how I'm going to attack these instead of trying to check them all at the same time. And um, what I want to mention is the P1456 and the 1457, those are two two trip codes. So you can't set those on one trip and you have to drive a certain length for the computer to, to do all its checks in order for that um, code to come on also. So you can't just fire up the car and have that code kick on or drive it around the block and have it kick on. It's not going to happen. You have to drive two decent sized trips before those codes will set. And while, while we're here, I might as well mention that um, also the P0451, 0452, and 0453 all generally point to the fuel tank pressure sensor. So if you get those 
codes. I would start looking at the fuel tank pressure sensor before I go anywhere else. All right, and on these Honda systems, when I see um, a 1457 or a 1456, on a 1457, the first thing I go after is that EVAP canister shut valve. That's, that's the most common problem when you see these 1457s. After that, it could be anything. And then uh, the 1456, the first thing I go after is the gas cap. And then after that, it could be anything in the system. So those are the, when you need a road map to determine which way do I start, that's how I start. And the easiest way that I've found to check these is you need a smoke machine. Now, I realize a lot of you don't have a smoke machine. So I'll show you some things you can do to check these systems later in the video. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the line that goes to the canister. I'm going to disconnect it right here at the purge valve up near the engine. I'm going to attach my smoke machine and I'm going to fill this whole system with smoke. And then, and then that will tell me, okay, where's the leak? Because that smoke will come out where the leak is. And when I put smoke in the system it's going to come down here it's going to fill up the evap canister it'll fill up these lines and then it'll go through the uh, shut valve and it's going to vent to the outside air because this valve is normally open and so what happens is this valve a lot of times will stick open so when the computer tells it to shut it doesn't shut and that's that's usually where you get this one four five seven code is that the it just vent, continues to vent to the outside air. So what we'll do is I will hook up my scan tool and we will tell that to shut. And once we tell it to shut, we should hear a click and then we should also see the smoke stop coming out over here. It should stop and then that should be it. And then this whole system will uh, start filling up with smoke and then we can look and see where our leak is. And this uh, canister vent shut valve, it's a pretty simple solenoid. It's only a two, war two wire solenoid you got um, battery power going to the solenoid and then the ground side goes over to the computer and then at, whenever the computer wants it energized it just grounds that um, with a transistor inside the computer and so what we'll do is we'll take the scope and we'll just connect to that negative side and when we tell the computer to turn it on we want to look and make sure that um, side is grounding and that'll tell us our circuit integrity is good it's a real quick check to make sure everything's good on the circuit side all right, let's, so let's go over to the car and see what we got. All right, I got the vehicle jacked up, put on jack stands, got all my test equipment out. Just going to make sure, even though it didn't give us a circuit code, I just, uh, this is the valve right here. And you can see, I just back probed the green wire. It's just a simple two-wire solenoid and the computer grounds it which uh, energizes it so we'll just make sure <clears throat> we'll just make sure using the scan tool once we uh, once we turn it on that should drop to zero volts you can see we're on a 20 volt scale so you can see there's 12 volts right there uh oh coming to get us again All right, so now I just commanded it on, and you can see, even though there's a spike, you can see it grounded it right to zero. And now, turned it back off, and you can see, boom, goes back to 12 volts. So this circuit is working properly. So now we'll have to put the smoke machine on it and uh, see where our leak is. All right, in order to put the smoke machine on, here's your purge control valve solenoid right here. So here is a good spot to uh, hook the smoke machine up. This goes right back to that EVAP canister solenoid. And this was simply connected right to the bottom right here. All I did was unplug it from here. And we'll put the smoke machine in there. Just connect our smoke machine, turn it on. And then uh, we'll allow the system to fill up with smoke. And then we'll energize that uh, evap uh, canister vent solenoid and see if we still have leakage after we energize it. Once we energize it, it should shut it off and the flow should stop. Alright, as you can see, here's the OTC smoke machine, the leak tamer. I got it fired up and it's pumping smoke into there. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here, it's a little ball right there. And you can see 
on this gauge it says how big how big of a leak how much uh, volume it's putting through we want that ball to be down here less than 0 0.02 and right now it's way up here but that's because the valve is open once we shut that canister vent shut valve we should see it drop if it doesn't and uh, then we know that we got a leak right there at the valve most likely that's the most common problem on these is that that valve doesn't shut all the way probably because it got rusted or other contaminants got in there I don't know if you can see it but we got smoke coming out alright so we got good flow back here so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll ener energize that uh, canister vent control valve and uh, see if we can't isolate the leak we just use our bi-directional tool on the scan tool we'll turn it on now it's on <laughs> now we just energize this we just energize this right here so it should uh, it should off cut off the flow that's in this if you can see where my finger is that's in this hose right here should cut that off okay so as you can see right now we told the computer to energize that uh, canister vent shut valve and it didn't energize we couldn't hear a click and it didn't shut off the flow that was going to the outside air so right now we know that canister vent shut shut off valve is bad um, but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to tap on it we'll just tap on it with a wrench see if I can't get it to work okay well it appears that banging on the uh, shut valve worked because now I forgot to film it but now when I turn it on and off with the scan tool I can hear it click so it looks like it's working so what I'm going to do now as kind of a demonstration I'm going to disconnect that hose right there and then uh, I'll show you how it's supposed to properly be working I went to the uh, went to the valve here and I disconnected the hose so you can see the hose goes right there and here it is so I disconnected it we'll turn the smoke on and watch the smoke will come out of the valve and then we'll energize this valve and shut it off and then we shouldn't have any more smoke coming out all right the smoke machines on and now boom you can see look at all that smoke coming out of there now so we'll turn it on again see now I can hear it clicking before I couldn't hear it clicking And you can see the signal is grounded so the that solenoid is activated now and you can see the smoke stops and now the thing's working so I found the problem this this vent solenoid is definitely the problem and the only reason it started working is because I smacked on it with my uh, with my wrench there and you can see before the ball was way up here now you can see the balls hovering at about 0.01 which is not bad I'd like to see it closer to zero but anything below 0 0.02 will uh, will at least not set a check engine light so at 0 0.01 we're good but I know that that uh, vent solenoid is bad all right now it looks like we got the valve working and uh, but I want to make sure there's no other leaks because um, you can see now that it's shut off it's showing up it's hovering at 0 0.01 on our uh, on the leak tamer and I want to make sure that 0 0.01 isn't leaking somewhere else in the system so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my finger over the end of the valve right there and I'll make sure that that is completely sealed because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that 0 0.01 is still leaking out of the valve but we want to make sure so I put my finger over it and then uh, we'll look at the flow of the uh, smoke coming out and we want to see that go 
as close to or all the way to zero. And then if that's the case, then we'll know that the rest of the system doesn't have any leaks. If I can get in there, if I put my finger over it. Now I have it completely sealed off. And I don't know if you can tell, but that ball went all the way to the bottom. Alright, so as you saw, once I put my finger over it and the ball went all the way to zero, meaning I had no more flow in my smoke machine, that meant the rest of the system integrity is good. So our only leak was that canister shut vent, uh, vent valve. So let's go ahead and get another one. Let's get it fixed. Some of these are difficult to get out because the screws rust in there. But you just have to unplug it. Come on, there we go. Just unplug it. And there's one screw down here. And there's one right up on the top there. And there should be a 12 millimeter bolt, just one of them, right up in the middle there. You can barely see it. And there it is. All right, you can just disconnect those couple lines, leave the main one connected back here. And you should, if these screws aren't too bad, you can just pop them off. Just a couple of machine screws. You can see that this this one they weren't rusted in there or anything, which is nice. It may have been replaced before, who knows? And just pop it out. And that's it right there. So you can actually take it off while this thing's still in the car. Just be careful because this line over here is still connected. If you're gonna do it that way. So now we just gotta get a new one of these. And you can see, this is the whole unit removed. I went ahead and pulled it out so you could see it. <clears throat> it just clips right here on this part. So just make sure to get that back in when you put it back in the car. And then on this side, this is where the uh, solenoid lives, those two screws. And like I said, you may have trouble getting these screws out. And you may have to really crank on them to get them off. Um, it's possible you may have to replace the whole canister unit if you can't get these off or if you break if you break the plastic right here if you can't get them off you may have to replace the whole thing but you can take it off if you want or you can do it like I showed just uh, drop it down a little bit and enough to get these two screws out and take it out and you can see with the remove this is where it lives and this that's where that bracket where it attaches in the back so just make sure you get that back in there correctly when you put it back in and I like putting a little bit of uh, rust preventative stuff on these uh, screws and bolts that'll help you get it out the next time if you're the one who has to take it out whoever takes them off next is gonna thank you for doing that and here's the part number um, this obviously this is a Honda factory part you can get aftermarket parts I know Dorman makes one and I think some other companies make them so let's get the right part for your car and get it installed all right we'll get this put back together I like to just put a little silicone spray right there just to help it pop in You can see it's not too difficult of a job once once you know 
which part it is. Just get these snug. You don't need to kill them. Now, the factory one, the brand new one, came with a new O-ring on there. So I didn't have to take the old one off. It's a good idea to have a new O-ring, but if your aftermarket one doesn't come with the O-ring, take it off. Maybe put a little bit of silicone lube on there and then put it in. Just make sure, don't forget that O-ring. Alright, we'll get this back here. Get it installed. As you can see, it's a little bit tight in here. Make sure to get all these hoses back all the way on. And obviously don't forget to plug in the electrical connector. Alright, double check your work. Make sure you got everything. Make sure you got the little connector over here. Make sure the hose is on, plugged in, connected, plugged in, and over here make sure you get this one plugged in. Make sure you get it bolted up. And make sure you get it bolted up tight. Alright, I realize some of you may not have um, all the test equipment, but many of you probably have an ohmmeter or a DVOM. So what we can do is I have the uh, I have the vent solenoid off the vehicle now. This is the old one, and uh, what you can do to test it is you can do an ohms check on it. It's not the greatest test, but it is one that you can do um, just with a simple voltmeter. And so we'll turn on our voltmeter and the reading should be somewhere between 25 and 55 and I don't know if you can read that but we're at 27 right now so the ohms reading on this one is good all right another test you can do to um, energize the solenoid uh, off the vehicle is to um, is to take a 9 volt battery you can see I have it connected to ground that's that's our negative in the car and that's our positive so we'll hook it up the same way and you can watch when we take our 9 volt touch it you can hear it energize if you can hear that but it's energizing but if you look closely I don't know if, there's a good sized spark that's jumping off that every time I connect it and disconnect it there's a nice little spark do not do this test on the vehicle. This thing is right next to the charcoal canister or attached to the charcoal canister where all the fuel vapor fumes are and you could blow your car up or start a nice fire. Take it off, get it in a well ventilated area and do your checks like that if you're going to do this. Do not energize it with a secondary energy source on the vehicle like I'm doing right here because those sparks can be very dangerous. I can't stress that enough. Don't energize it like this on the car. And another test you can do, or the last test you can do, is uh, you just 
use just your standard Mighty Vac type uh, vacuum tester. Uh, I think you can get something similar from Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. And you can test all these solenoids and all the solenoids that I'm telling you about on the VVAP um, system, you can test the same way. Just you have to take them off the car, you can energize them with a nine volt battery, and then you can put a pressure tester on there and see if they hold pressure once they're energized or de energized, depending on um, if they're normally open or normally closed. This one is normally open, so, and you'll need a little attachment like that. You need a little attachment that'll fit in there. But you can see we'll attach it like that and you watch the pressure gauge and you can see until I close it you can see that it's normally open so it's not holding any pressure and it'll stay that way until we close it by energizing it. Now I've closed it and energized it and all you need to do is put a little pressure on it like that. And if you can see the gauge but it's holding right there. Yep, it's not moving. So this tests out well. Once I beat on it and got it to work again, this thing is working. I could have I could have left it in the car for a little while if I wanted, but once I knew it was bad, we were changing it out. But you can see that that's holding the pressure pretty well. So this is still good if I wanted to. It's dropping slightly, but that's not that big of a deal. Now when I de-energize it, you can see it'll drop a little more. But it but because we have pressure on the diaphragm in there, it will hold vacuum we disconnected like that. So that's how easy it is to test these off the car with a 9 volt battery. Just make sure it's off the vehicle. Alright, just remember once you're done with uh, making the repair make sure you go in and uh, clear all the fault codes so that way uh, you'll start fresh. I should note that this code had come come up on this vehicle prior evidently and the uh, owner replaced the gas cap hoping that that would fix it and sometimes you may get lucky and uh, and the gas cap will fix this code but more often times than not it's what we did today that usually fixes it <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and make sure that that's still the same code yep same thing we'll go ahead and erase the codes as you can see it's not too difficult a job once you know what the problem is and uh, how to go about diagnosing it um, you can get lucky sometimes on that 1457 and just shotgun it with parts but that's not a procedure I recommend but I understand some of you are not going to have all this diagnostic equipment um, you probably got a 60 or 70 percent chance of being right on that part on this 1457 so uh, just take that with a grain of salt so at least you know what you're up against so if this video helped you hey make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching